Emergency orotracheal intubation is indicated in any situation in which definitive control of the airway is needed. Specific indications include cardiac or respiratory arrest failure to protect the airway from aspiration, inadequate oxygenation, or ventilation, and impending or existing airway obstruction. Or tracheal intubation is also commonly performed as part of the care of critically ill patients with multisystem disease or injuries, and to facilitate control of the airway during surgical procedures requiring general anesthesia in emergency cases, such as cardiac arrest. Airway management is of paramount importance, and there are very few contraindications to orotracheal intubation. Intubation must be performed with strict inline stabilization of the cervical spine. If neuromuscular blocking agents or sedatives are used to facilitate intubation, the difficulty of intubation must be assessed and planned for before proceeding. This assessment is discussed in more detail in the accompanying written supplement. The presence of tumors, trauma, burns, edema, or infection of the pharyngeal or laryngeal soft tissues may distort airway anatomy, leading to difficult orotracheal intubation. When faced with a potentially difficult airway consulting with an experienced intubator and preparing to use an alternative intubation technique are recommended before proceeding. Be sure that all equipment is readily accessible and functioning properly. Check the cuff of the endotracheal tube for leaks. Insert the stylet into the endotracheal tube. Make sure that the tip of the stylet does not extend beyond the end of the endotracheal tube. Be sure that the suction catheter is secured within easy reach, obtain intravenous access and place the patient on a monitor. If time and conditions permit, assign an assistant to watch the monitor during the procedure and report any changes. Adjust the height of the bed so that the patient's head is level with the lower portion of your sternum, unless otherwise indicated. Place the patient into the sniffing position by placing a pillow or folded towel under the patient's occiput. This combination of flexion of the neck and extension of the head improves the alignment of the axes of the oral cavity, pharynx, and larynx, facilitating optimal visualization of the vocal cords. If the clinical situation allows, preoxygenate the patient with a non-rebreather mask or a bag valve mask with 100% oxygen for at least 3 minutes prior to intubation. The assistant should apply the Selic maneuver by applying firm pressure to the cricoid cartilage. The Selic maneuver compresses the soft wall of the esophagus between the cricoid cartilage and the cervical vertebrae, theoretically preventing passive regurgitation of gastric contents. Position your body so that your eyes are at a distance from the patient that facilitates vision. Hold the laryngoscope in your left hand, blade down, open the patient's mouth with your right hand, and insert the laryngoscope blade to the right of the patient's tongue. Gradually move the blade to the center of the mouth pushing the tongue to the left. Visualize the epiglottis. The ideal placement of the laryngoscope blade depends on whether a curved or straight blade is used. Place the tip of the curved blade into the vallacula, between the base of the tongue and the epiglottis, and lift anteriorly to expose the vocal cords. When using a straight blade, place the tip of the blade just past the epiglottis, and lift anteriorly to expose the vocal cords. When using a straight blade, place the tip of the blade just past the epiglottis, and lift anteriorly to expose the vocal cords. When the tip of the blade is correctly positioned, lift the laryngoscope upwards and forwards at a 45-degree angle, directing the force of your lift along the axis of the laryngoscope handle in the direction of the ceiling over the patient's feet. Avoid bending your wrist or rocking the blade against the patient's teeth, which can result in dental or soft tissue injury, and will not enhance the view of the vocal cord. If available, the assistant should gently pull on the right side of the cheek to enhance the visibility of a glarus. Hold the tracheal tube in your right hand, while maintaining your view of the vocal cords. Insert the endotracheal tube into the right side of the patient's mouth. The tube should not obstruct your view of the vocal cords during this critical part of the procedure. Pass the tube through the vocal cords until the balloon passed through the cord. Remove the stylet and advance the tube until the balloon is 3 to 4 cm beyond the vocal cords. Inflate the endotracheal balloon with air to the minimum pressure required to prevent air leaks during total volume ventilation with a bag. 
this usually requires less than 10 cc of air. The assistant must maintain cricoid pressure until tube placements in the trachea are confirmed. The end of the endotracheal tube should lie in the mid 3 to 7 cm above the carina. A good rule of thumb is 22 cm at the teeth for the average sized adult. Place the CO2 detector on the endotracheal tube and detach the ventilation bag, administering a few tidal volume breaths. Carbon dioxide will be reliably and consistently detected within the first six breaths of an endotracheal intubation and with each exhalation thereafter, except in some cases of cardiac arrest. When gas exchange may not occur, assess secondarily for an esophageal tube placement by auscultation over the stomach during positive pressure ventilation, auscultate both lungs in the mid-axillary line to assess for equal bilateral air movement. If breath sounds are diminished on the left side after intubation, you may need to gradually withdraw the endotracheal tube until symmetrical breath sounds are restored and auscultated. Chest radiography is used to assess the patient's pulmonary status after intubation. And to ensure that the tip of the radio-opaque line embedded in the endotracheal tube is well positioned at the level of the mid-trachea and not in either main stem bronchus. Note that radiography cannot be relied upon to detect esophageal intubation. Secure the endotracheal tube to the patient's head once the proper position has been confirmed.